Hey guys, welcome back to the Cast and Spear podcast. In this series, we have Nick Hyde, surf fishing extraordinaire out of SoCal. He has a website, Surf Fishing SoCal SD. Go check him out. Today, we are going to be covering a high level primer on surf fishing in SoCal, covering reading the surf, gear selection, types of fishing. Welcome to the show, Nick. It's awesome to be here. Awesome, dude. So let's let's start out first. When it comes to reading the surf, what does somebody need to know? Uh, well, they got to know a lot, but to start, the thing I always tell people is you're looking out at the water. You're looking for structured spots, whether it's hard structure or soft structure. And the biggest thing is if you look out there and you see what looks like just normal surf, figure out what the normal nothing spot is. And if you see something that looks different, fish it because it's probably worth it. Um, that's where you that's where you start but when you do finally get into it you're looking for say the biggest things on a sandy beach you're looking for troughs holes um, rip currents a little bit too a lot of people value those more than i do and for whatever reason that might be but i know like talking with coach he he's all about rips <laughs> he just anything that sucks his little chum and bait out there he's all about it um but for for finding the troughs and holes, the biggest thing is is you got to understand what what's happening there. And what's happening there is, let's let's take a hole for example, just a deep pocket. You've got anytime you see a wave coming in, usually it's crested. Which which what I mean there is there's white water on top. It's it's a typical wave. When you can find any spot where that crest, when it is prior there, and it comes towards the the, the sand. And at some spot, that crest gives out and becomes smooth water. That smooth water is something you want to hit because what happened is a wave, when it has that crest, it has footing, what would I call the sand, and it's higher sand. And as the sand inclines or the level of water decreases as the, the water comes to shore, if that sand gives out, it loses its footing. And that footing basically, in giving out, cleans out the water because it, it has no support to create that crest on top. And then as it passes, you'll see the crest regain. And when, when the crest regains, you know that that whole section where there was no crest, that's the hole you want to fish. So that's the biggest, most clear depiction I can give to anybody about looking for holes. Um, sometimes that same thing will, it'll look very similar if there's a big reef in between because that that big reef will have the same effect just in opposite manner because it will raise up just eliminating the wave completely and then it'll kind of dip down it's just it just won't ever regain its crest after that so that's the only difference there but if you're looking to just start out look for that smooth smooth decrested water and i think that's the biggest thing to take away from reading the surf that's perfect. Right. And in another episode later this week, guys, we're going to be doing an even deeper dive into reading the surf. So let's switch gears a little bit in terms of gear selection based on the different species. Are you thinking, like, maybe let's start like lighter line and then build our way up to something more for like sharking? Yeah, let's do it. So, so it, yeah, go for it. So with, with light line, uh, light line's kind of a general term. Uh, what I, I like to fit light line, you've got your, your Carolina rig, which is the classic, uh, what everybody thinks of when they think light line surf fishing. And then you've got lure fishing, which is going for halibut, possibly white sea bass, uh, other things like that. And so start, starting with the Carolina rig, what you'll, if you go out there reading online, what you're going to find is you want to use four pound, eight pound monofilament um, and then to a four pound eight pound liter something like that of fluorocarbon um, carolina rig fully agree you should be using that it's got i think the best sensitivity you've got a perfect connection from you to your hook so you should theoretically feel anything and everything that happens to that hook which is what you need if you have perfect tension uh, you need to feel that that fish bite because if you don't set it at the right moment you're likely going to lose it um but with the light line i funny thing is so i actually use 15 pound test um and that to a lot of people especially a lot of the kind of guys on facebook and instagram and a lot of guys just kind of look down upon that but i've i've needed that 15 pound test many times and i use a 4000 series reel um 
a lot of guys use 2500s 3000s um it, again it, it is all personal preference like if you're catching fish you're doing it right there's there's nothing wrong with with doing it however you do um but i to kind of lay things out really clearly i use 15 pound test mono to 15 pound test floral i use a carolina rig with a one ounce sinker size seven barrel swivel a size two or a size four mosquito hook um owner mosquito hooks are typically what i use um from that i use a 4000 series pen battle two um, i have also used the the pen pursuit three 4000 combos and no complaints there um, but my typical rod and reel for the carolina rig is going to be a 4000 series pen battle two uh, paired with an okuma salilo and that's going to be an eight six medium action i think i was going to say i have it here but i realized we're just doing audio i could show it um but yeah and and a lot of guys i think are going to prefer a little bit longer a rod than a seven footer um so so the eight six is typically what people are going to be using out there um I wouldn't, I wouldn't go medium light just because I think when it comes to setting a hook on a big guitar or a big spot fin, that medium light's going to, it might not create enough power to, to really set the hook where you need it to set. Um, and I think that that's what a lot of people, like if you go on Facebook groups and, and other websites aside from mine, you're going to find you want that medium light, you want a 2500 series reel, you want four to eight pound test and possibly down to a size six or size eight hook. Um, and, and it's just, you can, you can make all that work. One of my biggest things with a size six or size eight hook is how often do you want to have to dig your pliers down to the belly of the fish to get the hook out? And for me, I, I'd probably call myself about 96% catch and release. Absolutely. I'll take a fish home if I think it's worth eating it. Mainly if I've, if I've planned for it, absolutely um but i just if there's a fish that i don't plan on keeping i don't want to kill it um and and another thing with that is you, you kind of gotta think about what fighting a fish for 20 minutes is going to do to it on light line um you, you do want to kind of make your your rigging and set it according to the the, the weight class of the fish that you're fighting and I think just going super light line when you're dragging a fight out for 15, 20 minutes. And I, I, I don't know how, how long it typically takes, but I've seen some guys on their four to eight pound test dragging a, a Corbina fight that's maybe only 18 inches out for 20 minutes. And it's like, okay, if you're going to keep it, that's one thing. But if you're going to release that, it might be dead after that type of fight so that that's part of the reason i use what i use but the other part which we'll get into later when we talk about some of the crazier catches um you never know what you're going to hook on sand crabs i know you typically only get the yellowfin croaker corbina perch um stuff like that but i've hooked five foot leopard sharks i've hooked close to five foot guitar fish you hook a bat ray bigger than 36 inches good luck <laughs> i mean those things will take you for riding. They're they're looked down upon, but I think it's a heck of a fight. Um, and even even some of the bigger, you get a 23 inch spot fin or a heck of 28 inch corbina, you know, they're gonna they're gonna test your tackle on four to eight pound test. And and you also look at, hey, do you use that? How often are you snapping off and losing hooks in, in these fish's mouths and bellies? So I don't know, nothing nothing totally against it. You do what you want to do, but. Um, I've got my my rigging down to a science for me, and if you've got your own, great. But that's what I use. So for when it comes to sharking or some of the heavier game um, riggings, do you use any of the longer rods, like the thirteen footers that are common on the East Coast, or are you staying at like below eleven feet? Oh no no, no. yeah I, I uh so for your reference, it's this guy right here. Um, 12 foot to 13 foot rod for me. Um, and then do you, do you want me to get into all that right now? I uh, no, we can, that's actually a perfect place to stop. We will, uh, talk a little bit more of about the hardcore game stuff in the sharking episode. 
So I think this was a perfect primer to get your guys excited for what's to come in the series. So come back tomorrow. Tomorrow we're actually talking about surf fishing rigs from white line to sharking. So see you on the next one. Hey guys, one more thing before you go. You can subscribe to this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and your favorite podcast app. And if you like the podcast, please consider rating it on Apple Podcasts and leaving a review. This helps other people find the show. Thanks.